Okay, my friends, this is going to be serious, and I mean very serious. Reuters is a global news organization that says they fact-check things, and they stand behind their, their verdicts. And their verdict on giant human skeletons is that they're altered. Exactly what they say. Okay, my friends, I am going to just present my evidence, um, you know, the actual specimens, the documentation I have on the DNA, and um, you, you make your own determination, but I believe that it was it's Reuters' responsibility to, to address this if, as part of their fact-checking policy. Now, here's their claims. They're, they're citing all kinds of evidence that people are saying this and that about these giants and giant trees and hoaxes and Facebook flat earth people and all this stuff that, you know, but their verdict is that it's false. The images are alleged giant skeletons have been are altered and are part of a long standing internet hoax. Now, this was produced by Reuters fact check team and they have certain policies. Let's see what their policies are on making these kind of claims against my kind of evidence. Okay, this is Reuters fact check policy and they are they, they sound like they're very legitimate and they want to be honest. And here's what they're saying, corrections policy. Reuters is honest about errors. If they make an error, if you make an error, that's an error. I have no issue with that. And I, they did make an error. So they rectify them promptly and clearly. We do not disguise or bury mistakes in subsequent updates or stories. Well, readers are invited to contact us. Now, if you read what they say, that they say, no, these giants that I am presenting are fake. They, they've been faked and it's a hoax. You can contact them, and I wish you would. I'm going to put a link to this to advise them that they have an error and to look at what I am going to send them, because I obviously am going to send them all my stuff too, which I am going to show you all of my evidence. And they say, if you have evidence, send it, we'll take a look at it, and if we're wrong, we will make the issue a statement that we're wrong. That's what I expect. Okay, my friends, I'm going to show you the samples that I use to take the extractions from and then I sent it off to Helix Biolab which did a fabulous job on these the these samples that I sent them. Now I didn't send them the complete body parts. Some of these things are just gigantic. I drilled inside, deep down inside and got blood out of it. Actual blood. It's some of it was you know it's dried blood, but it's it's um right right from the artery. And they were all negative controls were negative and all the positive stuff was positive. And this is all the they got excellent quality DNA sequence obtained from the thirty six inch tip and the lung. Um and these were the that's what they were, the Homo sapien mitochondrial cytochrome B gene and the D loop region. And it goes on with the CTAGs and all this. And this was a certified lab. And he's, uh, you know, he, they got attacked <laughs> for doing this. And um, he made sure that I was to say that I was the one that extracted the samples. Now, if I put my own blood in there and sent it off to him, well, they would have this same sort of result. I didn't do that. I took it out of, and you will see that what I just took it out of coming up right now. All right, so I'd like to have Reuters explain this for their fact-checking. If they are actually fact-checkers, then they should contact me and explain their criticism here. That is a gigantic fingertip. That is a fingertip. That's the fingernail right there. You see that? That's the fingernail. I broke this piece off right here. So I can get down to some blood because this is very mineralized. The surface you can, really can't get it. And you, you don't swab anything off. You drill into the blood, literally into the blood. And I'll show you that. This is the little pad that bumps up to your next bone so they don't scrub. These are some blood supplies. Now, again, that is the fingernail. All right, this thing is almost three feet long, right? And I, I called it 36 inch tip. Now, that piece that I broke off is right here. It still has some of the fingerprints on it. See that? 
Those are sweat pores. That's a fingerprint ridge. And this is a heavy duty skin, and it is heavy duty. It's, it's about that thick, and it's just, you can't get any blood out of it. It's just made like this. It's like a leatherish stuff. So you got to go down inside where all the blood is, and there is a ton of blood in there, and you just take it right out. You see how much blood is inside fingertips? These are the terminals where your blood, the vein uh, blood meets the artery blood and so forth right down that area. This is a CAT scan of another fingertip that went with this hand. You see how big this fingertip is? That's three feet long. Three feet long. This hand, another one, it's on my property as well. This is, a, I, uh, I can't remember now, but I think it's maybe four feet wide for the whole hand. Now the other one, just the fingertip is three feet wide. And this is the little cleave in between your palm, the two little bumpers. And there's a tendon that runs down here. If you lay your left hand flat out, splay it way backwards, you'll see this tendon. And then this runs off to your small finger, and this runs off to the thumb. Uh, that, that's been DNA tested with using the fingertip. This is a lung right here. Well, there's two lungs. This one right here is completely, absolutely, flawlessly perfect. And I took blood right out of it, right out of the bottom, down on here, I drilled a hole into the... You, you, you got to drill into the red blood, and then you get a, a saturated ton of it. And he, was, he said it was excellent quality and it was dense. Now this one here I didn't bother to have DNA tested, but this one I did, and CAT scanned as well, and it's 100% human, and um, mitochondrial DNA, that's the mother's side. This one, on the little red spots, blood came out. The, the, there's blood stays really good, the red does. The black, uh, which is the vein blood, that uh, hardens up. That comes, turns into some kind of hard iron, what's well, called um, magnetite. But you see all these fibers? This is what, these are collagens. And this is what protects the inside of these things. They were like cooked into a substance that wrapped everything. And that's what, that's what feldspar is. This is feldspar. This is feldspar. This is the goose, my goose, Caesar Augustus. It was his feathers. And this is exactly the same material as that. They're aluminum silicates. There's a couple of little inclusions with them, different types of metals and minerals that were different because it's a beaker of, you know, eyelashes or that type of thing, fascia around the lung. You're going to have a little bit of different fascia around your kidneys, let's say, where you got some kind of salty area. You're going to have a little different around your your uh, stomach because it's acids but around your lungs it's primarily blood so every bit of the fascia in you has a little bit of a different uh, mineral makeup but the basis a hundred percent the basis of a hundred percent of fascia is aluminum silicates and it's because they're right next to each other on the periodic table they sort of fuse in together which makes them very are receptive to all kinds of different inclusions. But that's, anyway, it's aluminum silicates. Look at a feldspar, it's called. And, and feldspar, I think it's like, they claim it's a, almost all there is of rocks. It's like 60% or something. But feldspar is the coating. Inside is a lot of different, feldspar is only the coatings. It's the membrane. It's the skin. It's the tissue that wraps everything. It's the interstitium. This one doesn't have any left. This one's complete. Okay, these are the DNA reports I had done on three separate samples that I sent to Helix Biolabs back in 2015. And uh, I extracted the samples, put them in glassine bags. I did it meticulously, deep down inside, drilled down into the arterial blood supplies of all of these three samples. And I sent them off, and um, it took three months or so to do this. This was the first ever done in the world on, <clears throat> on uh, giant human or even human, ancient humans. This was like 2015, seven years ago. And um, 
they went through the whole thing and did a lot of whatever they, you know, I mean, this, this was very, very, very sophisticated. And then they submitted the samples to um, Eaton Biosciences for sequencing and all of the, putting it up against the national database. And they found out this is exactly what they were, was mitochondrial human DNA. And it was excellent quality and dense. There it is right here. Excellent quality DNA was obtained from the 36-inch temp sample in the lungs. And I'll show you these samples in a second. And I also had them CAT scanned by the best CAT scan people in the world, Jesse Garant and Associates. I worked with Jesse Garant and Associates back in, uh, oh, a long time ago, uh, 2015, right in that area, maybe even a little before that. And these people are the top in the world, basically. They do aerospace, archaeology, automotive, consumer. They work for the biggest companies in the world. It's Jesse Grant and Associates. And, um, and they worked with me, and they actually did seven CAT scans for me at no charge. All I had to do was get it out there and get them back. They were thrilled to be par participating, and I believe they got attacked too. <laughs> All they did was show pictures of the, the CAT scans. I'll show you a couple of them real quick. But um, everybody, the, the, the bio labs, um, Helix Bio Lab, Tom called me and said, make sure you understand that you were the one that extracted the samples. He says, I'll stand by the analysis of what you sent me, but make sure that, you under that everybody understands you're the one that extracted them. I didn't take them out of the rocks. Is what Tom says. He didn't want. He's, he doesn't want to be known as the person that extracted them from the rocks. He wants to be known as the person that did the analysis of what I, Roger Spur, extracted from the rocks. I, Roger Spur, extracted it. Tom from Helix Bio Lab analyzed what I extracted and sent to him. So if I put my own blood in there, well, then I'm a fraud. That's not the case. Okay, as you have seen or will see, my giants are factual. They have the specimens. They've been DNA tested, and they're anatomically exact. And all of these tales were told years ago, long, long, long ago, about the Greek giants. And this goes, this is, this is 200 A.D. All right, this is before there were any humans on the Pallene. The story goes a battle was fought between the gods and the giants. Traces of giants' demise continue to be seen to this very day. This is 200 A.D., that's 2,000 years ago. Whenever torrents swell with rain and excessive water breaks their banks and floods their fields, they say that even now, in gullies and ravines, the people discover bones of immeasurable enormity, like men's carcasses, but far bigger. And I'm telling you, those weren't the biggest ones. Now, I submitted all my stuff. I tried to, to Yale, and they wouldn't allow it. These people are from Yale, and they're talking about, in 2016, they finally agreed, yes, exceptional preservation of soft-bodied biota, which just means soft-bodied creatures and plants and, and animals. It was promoted by silica-rich oceans. But it was worldwide, not just in the ocean. It's worldwide, this one certain layer, worldwide. And it happened very fast, and they called it heavy precipitation <laughs> due to rapid precipitation of silica element, cements. Well, it was the world was flooded with, I mean, I, I, that's all you can say. It's a worldwide rapid precipitation, silica cements worldwide, promoted by silica-rich oceans. The oceans were all over the entire world. Now, they put, did this in 2016. I was trying to show my stuff for 10 years or more to Yale. The same people, Derek Briggs was the one that refused to see my stuff. Now they're taking credit for it. And this is, I, I want this known too. All right, they have a corrections policy. I'd like to see them fulfill what they say they're doing. This is Reuters once again. This is their home page here about their fact-checking service. And they do this to ensure that what they're saying is accepted correctly based on the evidence presented, not based on anybody's ideas or anything or tradition. And they, they haven't done this. So, and they say you could contact them and they're very, they, their correction policy. 
Reuters is honest about errors. If they made an error, which they absolutely did, we rectify them promptly and clearly. We do not dispute or bury mistakes or subsequent updates or stories. Now, we can contact them, and I wish you would do as well and ask them to look into these things about this disputed material. Because I, I I don't remember whether I contacted them or not, to be perfectly honest with you. But I do I I'm, I contact virtually everybody that makes these claims against me that are wrong. Now, and I'm obviously going to do it with this one and present it um, as I'm going to show you what I have, and I will present this video to them, and we'll see if we get any resolution. And then I'm going to have some demands. And they're going to be strong and firm demands because of their policies and their correction policy. If they don't correct it correctly, and I'm going to just say, oh, yeah, we were wrong. Sorry, have a nice day. They've been putting this out over the Internet against me for years and years and years. So what I'm going to want is for a worldwide announcement on their service that we were wrong. There were giants in the earth in those days. Roger Spur, Mud Fossil University has undisputable evidence, including DNA and specimens. If anybody would like to examine them, which I would hope Reuters would send somebody. Send somebody here, I'll show them. No problem with that whatsoever. So I want a worldwide announcement. I don't care about any money or anything, but I, I would think I could sue them. I don't know. But I would want that absolutely for certain, and a document addressing my evidence and saying that we were wrong, we're sorry, Reuters, I want an apology. And then I would, ex I would want them to examine any future evidence that I come up with. All right? Th th that should be obvious because this is nothing but denial for survival. And that's what is going on with, with academia now. Everything is denied for their survival. They were wrong about virtually everything. And I have all the evidence to show that. And if Reuters wants to stand in the way of truth, then that's a disgrace. And I don't think they want to. I think they were just wrong. And if they are honest, let's fix it up.